Um, so this one, I thought sebaceous hyperplasia. Yeah, this is sebaceous hyperplasia. Looks more or less like normal sebaceous glands. They're just big, and there are many of them. And every once in a while, I have a hard time telling apart sebaceous hyperplasia from sebaceous adenoma. Both are benign, but sebaceous hyperplasia is a normal finding in older adults and, and middle-aged adults, too. And, um, and uh, sebaceous adenoma, of course, sometimes is associated with muratory syndrome, which is, you know, uh, hereditary non-polyposis colorectal cancer syndrome. So it has some internal potential consequences. The thing that helps me is looking at a thin layer. If you've got a thin layer that's only one or two or three, a few cells thick um, of these blue germinative cells around the periphery, and most of the cells are mature sebacytes, that favors a sebaceous hyperplasia, but occasionally um, it can be kind of a tangential cut uh, or the gland's a little little inflamed or something, and it looks a little thicker, and I, and I can struggle sometimes deciding between them. But that, uh, this is, I think, a nice sebaceous hyperplasia, and you, as you guys know that these usually are yellowish papules, often on the nose or the cheek, and they often have a little, a little dell or an indentation or umbilication in the middle, and I think you can kind of see that here, this little dip down here, and that usually corresponds to a large central open cystic follicle. So these sebaceous glands all drain into one big follicular space that kind of comes out of the surface um, in classic cases. It doesn't always have to do that. Sometimes they're just multiple enlarged lobules around multiple different follicles. It just depends on the situation. Sebaceous hyperplasia, good.